The coolest thing about this camera is that any still photographer or amateur can just pick it up out of the box and just start to shoot films. When the prototypes of the 5D Mark II came into the Canon offices, I saw this camera, saw what it could do, and I just knew I wanted to try something with it. Little did I know that we kind of put together this little short film uh, called Reverie. You know, we were doing storyboarding between midnight and 2 a.m. Uh, the day of the shoot, and at 4 p.m. we set action for the first time. We shot it over two nights on a relatively small budget and uh, cut it in four hours. My experience level with this, I had no manual. I literally hit record. Uh, we're not talking complicated here, and just about anyone can pick this thing up, uh, buy a few nice lenses, and be producing some pretty amazing quality footage. Well, that's what's kind of startling about this. Not only is it 1080p out of the DSLR, but the video that was broadcast uh, on the internet was raw out of the camera. Not a single adjustment was made, no color adjustment, no exposure adjustment, no noise adjustment. All of the gear that I used was still photography gear. The quality out of the box is outstanding, and there really isn't that steep of a learning curve. And for still photographers that already know how to use the Canon system, it's not a leap. It's just a little bit of a, a small step. Uh, the lens I used on the car rig was a 15mm fisheye, which gives you that kind of cool circular distortion. And one of the cool advantages, too, was that the camera is so light and small, we just had to use three suction cups to mount it on the front of a car and drive around New York. You know, you don't have to have a whole film crew uh, trailing the car with lights, etc. It was just me in the car and uh, Jimmy the driver. What's amazing about this camera is that you really just drag the files off the CF card drag them into your editing software. In fact, you can play them right off your desktop. There's no rendering, no complicated, you know, anything. I really try to stick to prime lenses for this film. Uh, the 2414, the 512, 85-12, 135-F2, 200-F2. The idea being shoot with the best quality glass uh, that you can get uh, for still photography that you generally don't have access to uh, on a regular video camera. The whole idea is anyone can shoot 1080p video today with the cameras out there, but the ability to shoot at f2 is completely new, and that's what makes the look of the film so unique. Now I can take the exact same lenses I've been working with for 18 years and just adapt them onto this system with knowing exactly how they're going to react, what the depth of field is like, uh, how they focus, when the, prop the appropriate lenses works for each situation, and use the same techniques I've been shooting as a still photographer. And one of the things that can't be forgotten about this camera is how small it is and how lightweight it is. Uh, and that is a very key advantage in that you can mount this camera in places you'd never, never otherwise dream of mounting a motion picture camera, such as you know, on the hood of a car or the side of a car hanging as you're driving uh, with less than $500 worth of grip equipment. What's truly groundbreaking about this camera is its performance in low light. It's almost as if though whatever you can see with the naked eye can suddenly be recorded uh, on a video camera at, in high definition. So as a still camera in and of, in of its own, it's pretty impressive. The fact that you can do this at 30 frames a second is unbelievable.